Hi everybody, Mr. Hayes. We're formalizing how to do significance tests for mean of differences. Obviously different than difference of means. So we're going to go through and jump right in this. And again, as always, comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your neighbors. Anybody who loves AP stats, go ahead and have them jump on. I appreciate it. It's been crazy that I've doubled my subscribers already so far and I'm looking forward to doing some more. Um, so anyway, so the important ideas are this. The first round, here is all of the math. So a one sample t-test for the mean of differences is going to be, and again, very familiar, just making sure we're labeling things out. T is equal to um, our statistic difference minus the difference of what the mean should be. And again, this right here often is going to be your null hypothesis. It, the reason why we're not necessarily putting null or zero in there is just because, again, we want it to be general enough for any situation. What we're going to be experiencing, it will be whatever your null value is. And then you're going to divide it through by the standard deviation of your differences divided by the square root of your sample size. Now, to be clear, the two differences between the two are this. Okay, so if we're doing a paired t-test, which is basically what we're doing here, because we're taking, I mean, think about it, the seniors did two different things, right? Strategy one, strategy two, and subtracted the two. So whenever you have a paired thing, you have one sample doing two different things, that's going to be a paired t-test, and we're going to do the mean of differences. So the what we've got one sample, the data's paired, like I just said, you're going to do the mean of those differences there, and so you're subtracting first, and then you're averaging. That's different than what you're seeing here, where you have a two-sample t-test, where you have two totally independent samples, they're not related, and then you're finding the mean of each of those samples, and then you're subtracting those. So again, there you're averaging first, and then you're doing the mean. Okay, And so first one, so here we've got mean one minus mean two. So now down in the check your understanding, you're going to go through and we're going to present you with three situations and you need to say which one is which. Would I use a paired t-test on this or would I use a two-sample t-test on this? So hit pause, take a look, and we'll talk about them here in a second. All right, so we're back. Let me scroll down hopefully just a little. So here's the situation. The first one, we receive a random sample of 30 adults. We're selected. Each adult is reported the number of pieces of junk mail they got in the mail and number of pieces of junk mail that they or junk email that they got. And then the researcher that same day. And then the researcher wants to know: Do people? Oh, let me get this back up so you can see a little bit better. Sorry. Um, if adults receive significantly more junk mail or junk email than they do regular mail. So again, ask yourself: How many samples do I have? And that's really the crux of this. So you have one person saying, reporting two different numbers. So because it's that, you're pairing them off. So this would actually be going through, and this is going to be a mean of differences. Okay, And the reason for that is, is because you're going to use pair T procedures. You have one sample of 30 people. Each adult is getting two different measurements. And then you're going to go and average the difference of those two. Okay, So that would be much like what we just did. So in the second one, you've got a random sample of 100 people who live on the West Coast and a hundred sample, uh, sample of 100 people who live on the East Coast. Each person reports how many spam calls that they get in a one week period and they report those. We want to know, do the people who live on the West Coast get more spam calls than the people on the East Coast? Again, ask yourself, how many samples do you have here? I've got West Coast and I've got East Coast. Those are two different samples. So that means that you're going to go through here and you're going to do uh, two sample T procedures. You're going to take all the data, average them, and then find the difference between those two. And in fact, here, so we'd have mean of uh, west minus mean minus east because we're, again, and the reason why it's west minus east is because west coast, we want to think they may have more. So we're doing significantly more there. And you could still do it reverse, but who wants to deal with the negative numbers? The world's negative enough as it is. Um, and then the last one, a researcher randomly selects a variety of 15 cell phones. Um, from different manufacturers. They go to a place and see the different strengths in rural areas. So they do one in the rural area of Pennsylvania. They go to Virginia and do a rural area there. And then they compare what the signal strength is between those 15 phones. Again, notice 15 phones, they're getting a measurement in Pennsylvania and they're getting a measurement in Virginia. Actually, we're more like Pennsylvania and Virginia, right? Um, so that's going to be a paired T test, um, paired T procedure. So you're going to go through and you're going to use this because you're using the same 15 phones. You're going to find the difference between those signal strengths and then average that. Okay? And that's it. We're done with tests. Well, I take that back. We're still looking at chi squared, but we're done with the vast majority of the tests that we're doing. So um, if you have any questions, again, 
bring them to class, throw them down below, talk to your teacher, like, subscribe, all that other good stuff. And again, sorry it's been so long, spring break, and then getting back into school took a while, but hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye.